Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining me and welcome back to a thought for the last day in June. Would you believe it? This is Tuesday the 30th of June. I thank you again to Jonathan who uh, took yesterday's thought for the day, uh, continuing his series on the Lord's Prayer. So thanks again for doing that, Jonathan. Now, the thought I'm bringing to you today, I'm bringing a word really, and the word of the day is encouragement. I had a wee look in the dictionary for an official definition of encouragement. And it says, and I quote, it is to bring support, confidence or hope to someone. Now, that's wonderful in the general sense. It's also especially wonderful in the Christian sense because it is good to bring support confidence and hope, that eternal hope in particular, uh, to people. Uh, encouragement, I suppose I shouldn't really have looked up the dictionary, the clue to its meaning is in the word itself. It is literally to put courage in, courage in encouragement. Um, so that's what we're uh, all about this evening and that's what I'd like to talk uh, briefly about. Uh, there are, of course, some uh, plenty of biblical examples of encouragement and they're always great examples to follow. Um, one that I always liked in particular was um, with uh, poor Joshua. Uh, Joshua was given the task of following in the footsteps of Moses, would you believe? Um, which is a pretty tough act to follow. Uh, so the Lord himself encouraged Joshua and said not to worry that as he was with Moses, so he would be with Joshua. Uh, what an encouragement that would have been to get that confidence, that hope, that strength, that support from none other than the Lord God himself. But when you mention encouragement and Bible examples or biblical characters, I suppose the person that springs to a lot of our minds is Barnabas. Uh, we're told actually that Barnabas wasn't his actual name at all. Uh, Acts 4 and 36, um, uh, we read there that he was called Joseph or Joseph, depending which translation you read. Uh, that was his name, but he was named Barnabas by the apostles. And then we're told that the name Barnabas is translated son of encouragement. Apparently Barnabas was a landowner in Cyprus. Uh, we're told that there as well. He was a landowner in Cyprus and he sold the land and he brought it um, to uh, Paul and the apostles uh, to be used uh, for the church and for supporting um, people in the church. But, you know, uh, that's an encouragement in itself. You know, he was given that name by his peers, by the apostles, no less. He was given the name Barnabas because it meant the son of encouragement. So it gives you an idea as to the role Barnabas played. And of course, it was a very important role. It's uh, wonderful to be an encourager. If I can just um, give you another example regarding Barnabas. Um, Acts 11 uh, 22 to 24. The context of this particular text is that uh, there was a, a missionary work going on in Antioch and loads of people were getting saved. It was wonderful. Uh, so they, they sent word to Jerusalem uh, and of course the believers in Jerusalem were delighted and uh, the news of these things, Acts 11, 22, the news of these things came, came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem and what did they do? they sent Barnabas to go as far as Antioch, where it was all happening. Now, this is again what Barnabas did. Uh, when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all with purpose of heart that they should continue in the Lord. Uh, so there he is again doing what his name says he was used to doing he was encouraging them to continue in the faith for he was a good man full of the holy spirit and of faith and a great many people were added to the church 
So again, a wonderful example of Barnabas living up to his name and encouraging others. And that's wonderful. Uh, it's great to be an encourager. Now, uh, with that in mind, uh, can I encourage you all to be encouragers in turn? Uh, take your example from Barnabas, uh, if you wish. Because we are moving uh, quite quickly towards the uh, stage where we hope to be opening the church for worship. Now, there's no definite dates or anything yet, but we are moving in that direction. Um, back uh, in Belfast, in Northern Ireland, uh, churches are already getting spruced up and cleaned and disinfected because they're allowed to open uh, this very week. So if the conditions improve and there's no setback in the lockdown procedure, uh, we're hoping that here we should be able to return to worshipping together in some form in the not too distant future. Now, we've all got used to not going to church and we've all got to get used to going back to church. So can I just encourage you to encourage others to do this? Um, it may not be the big Thanksgiving service immediately that we all want or would, would look forward to, but it would be good to get back worshipping in some way, shape or form back in our church building. And it would be good for us to encourage others. Uh, I've addressed this in my weekly newsletter as well. It'll go out tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, 1st of July. Uh, but, you know, there are people who haven't been for a while, uh, not including ourselves, but it would be good if we could all come back together. It would be good if we could encourage others to come as well, perhaps people that we haven't seen for a while. And it would be really exciting if um, we could all come back together. So please, uh, everybody loves an encourager um, and it costs nothing to encourage others. We like to be encouraged and it's good to encourage others in turn. I remember when I gave up my business to go to Bible college, uh, take a change of direction um, in life. And it was wonderful to get encouragement. And it was strange because I was looking for encouragement from some people and it didn't come from that quarter. I got plenty of encouragement from people I didn't expect. And that was wonderful. Uh, it was even, even more valuable to me. Uh, so, Perhaps we could be like that. We could be encouragers of people and we could be the people that they don't expect to be encouraged by. And it would just be a great effort if we could encourage each other and encourage ourselves and encourage others in these um, in, in these days. There's still a wee bit of work to be done. Uh, there's plenty uh, going on, uh, but the leadership team are on the ball. Uh, they're keeping up to date with all the things that need to be put in place. So we will keep you informed just as soon as we have some hard facts. Uh, but I would just ask you in the meantime to continue to pray that everything will run smoothly. Uh, there'll be no uh, hiccup in the procedure, no spanner in the works, and it would be good just to be able to um, uh, to get the building open again. So uh, it would be wonderful. Um, uh, as you know, I've been going down and preaching to an empty church um, for the Sunday services that are on YouTube, and I long for the day when I can see all your faces in church again. Uh, there's nothing like the personal touch. So... Um, Please keep praying, keep washing your hands, keep looking up and keep safe and keep looking forward to the time when we can meet together. What a wonderful occasion that will be. So thank you for your encouragement to me. I hope in turn I can encourage you and let's all encourage others and see what the Lord has for us. Thank you for listening. That's all for today, so bye for now.